शांत शांति ओम स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थापकाय धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णा ते नम असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा मृत ओम शांत शांत शांति इट इज ऑफर फेसिलिटेशन टू श्री राम कृष्ण द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन द सुप्रीम गॉड इन कॉर्नेट लेट एस प्रे टू हिम टू लीड दस फ्रॉम द एंड्रियल टू रियल टू लीड दस फ्रॉम द डार्कनेस ऑफ इग्नोरेंस टू द लाइट ऑफ नॉलेज टू लीड दस फ्रॉम डेथ टू इमोर्टैलिटी वी हैव बीन स्टडी गॉस्पल ऑफ गॉस्पल क्लास Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Today's topic I have chosen Sri Ramakrishna's way to the worst situations of modern times. Sri Ramakrishna's life and teachings give a sure way to contain. the modern situation people are suffering because of their own bad activities lack of proper education becoming more and more materialistic extreme materialism so there are so many negative forces very forceful making the world miserable like the grass on the ground when it is tender how nice to look the grass but if proper care is not taken weeds grow and destroy the beauty of the grass so weeds are to be uprooted before it is too late Many times I have seen in the park how constantly park people come there to remove the weeds, so that the grass looks beautiful. In the same way, lot of crimes, violence, raising their ugly heads. but we should contain them before it is too late otherwise it becomes malignant very difficult lord krishna also warns in the bhagavad gita trividham narakasyedam dwaram nashanam atmana kamaha krodha tatha loba Very clearly, Lord Krishna warns in chapter sixteen, verse number twenty-one. He is pointing out the cause of suffering, the gateway to hell. What are they? 
only three factors are responsible for making a person most miserable. First one is Kamaha, lust, Krodaha, anger, Lobaha, greed. When a man is under the grip of either one of them or two of them or all of them, he is ruined. Nashana Matmanaha, he ruins himself. So Lord Krishna says, what should be done? We should forsake them, be strong enough and courageous to, to forsake. Though the warning is given, people don't heed to the warnings. When they are entering to suffering, after they cry, where God has made us suffering, where God made our life miserable, and so on. So, dharma is there to contain all these negative forces. That means, we must give utmost importance for the practice of dharma in all levels from the government level to the ordinary man's level. Everybody should be following dharma, righteous way. What we are seeing today is increasing violence. Though we no longer wage a war against wild animals as during primitive days, the war against violence continues to drag us into this issue, even against our wishes. In schools and colleges, in offices, in markets, streets, homes, and even in places of worship, Violence raises its ugly head in so many ways. Violent people and their violent ways seem to outnumber people who love peace and want to live in harmony. Why do people become violent? As Lord Krishna points out, it is because of their involvement in lust, in anger and greed. To add fuel to the fire, violence is increasingly becoming organized. For example, scientific advancements like internet cell phone, automatic weaponry, computers, print and electronic media are widely being employed to further violent ends. This results in many innocent, in no way connected people being killed or maimed or traumatized. Violence apart, increasing number of people joining or aiding communal violence, often carried out with remarkable precision and ruthless determination, drives most people, victims or simple observers, to lose their faith in human endeavors to contain such mindless acts of violence and restore peace and harmony. Cutting across their religious and intellectual affiliations, people all over the world are voicing their helplessness with the hope that a permanent solution to the evil of violence and terrorism will be found someday. 
the challenge of violence and hatred is nothing new. History is replete with instances of wars, crimes, religious persecutions and the likes. Perhaps the inbuilt nature of violence in human personality is so complex that a simple solution is not easy to find. On the brighter side, humanity has produced many eminent personalities whose sterling character and insightful teachings have brought solace and provided hope and succor to desperate millions. Their message of love and peace has outlived their physical existence and they continue to guide and inspire countless people everywhere. Buddha, the awakened one, Mahavira, the great Jain founder, Emperor Ashoka, and many more eminent people bear a testimony to it. So that means if you observe, it is evident that the world is being polluted by tremendous violence and crime. Against this background, what has Sri Ramakrishna to offer to the terror-stricken, blood-stained, violent world? In modern times, Sri Ramakrishna has come. Remarkable hope for all humanity. Surely, Sri Ramakrishna was no ordinary person who would have overlooked the issue of violence and hatred. He was a prophet. The consummation of 2000 years of the spiritual life of 300 million people as Roma Rola described him. However, his universal message, though widely acclaimed, needs to be understood and interpreted in the present context of increasing conflict and violence. After all, whatever a spiritual giant of his stature demonstrates and delivers has relevance for ages to come. Sri Ramakrishna's solution to the challenge of religious hatred and violence is contained in his invitation to everyone to know God. They experience his presence. Why fight and kill in the name of a God whom we have not seen or experienced? Why dispute about someone who for all practical purposes is a mere theory and whose nature is a figment of imagination for most of us? Man must realize God, feel God, see God. Talk to God. That is religion. Says Swami Vivekananda in his complete works, volume number 4. This is what Sri Ramakrishna taught. In other words, he changed the focus of our attention from the theoretical side of religion to its practical, experiential side. He said in his homely language, The one thing needful is to be introduced to the master of the house. Why are you so anxious to know beforehand how many houses and gardens and how many government securities the master possesses? The servants of the house would not allow you even to approach these and they would certainly not tell you about their master's investments. Therefore, Somehow or other, become acquainted with the master, even if you have to jump over the fence or take a few pushes from the servants. 
So the master himself will tell you all about his houses and gardens and his government securities. And what is more, the servants and the doorkeeper will salute you when you are known to the master. Sri Ramakrishna said this in the gospel. To know the master means to know God. He is the master of the world. Know him. This invitation to seek God is in fact an invitation to go to the core of religion for religion according to Sri Ramakrishna means realization. This is the ideal mankind will have to ultimately take up. But to accept an ideal he is to accept the means to reach that ideal as well. Sri Ramakrishna thus calls upon everyone to take up religion as a path to know God. It is not sufficient to just say that one belongs to a particular religion. One must realize its core, God too. We quarrel about my God and his God really stopping to ask whether either of us knows our God. Sri Ramakrishna had a learned disciple, Padmalochan, who was the court pandit of Maharaja of Burdwan in Bengal. Once at a meeting, the pandits were discussing whether Shiva was superior to Brahma or Brahma to Shiva. Padmalochan gave an appropriate reply. I don't know anything about it. I have not talked to Shiva or to Brahma. It is in the Gospel. To experience God or the ultimate reality underlying the visible and invisible world requires that we follow a particular method or discipline that would ultimately lead us to it. Each science and religion is a science has its own method to approach it. Every science has its own method of learning and religion has to be learnt in the same way. Once a person seriously takes up the ideal of experiencing God, the person cannot remain indifferent to the various requirements this way of, of life demands. Now what are such requirements? According to the saints and servants, the people who are competent to guide us on this path, one must live a pure life in order to come closer and proceed towards God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. A purity prepares the mind to become ready to experience God. What really keeps the all-time present God away from our vision? Impurities. What are those impurities? Lust, greed, jealousy, egoism, etc. That keep the mind restricted to its perception and prevent it from perceiving the reality called God. Yoga, the science of study of human mind and its possibilities, insists that before one embarks on seriously taking up this path, one must accept and become totally committed to certain do's and don'ts. These are called yama and niyama. Yama means control. It consists of five disciplines of which ahimsa, non-violence, that is one, and then truthfulness, non-stealing, continence and non-receiving of gifts. The practice of non-violence is therefore is a must of spiritual qualifications for need for reaching the ultimate goal. Patanjali Yoga Sutra further state, the sutras state that if one is established in non-violence, ahimsa patishtha, in the presence of such a person, all enmities among living beings cease. That samyadhau, 
वैरत्याग तत्सन्निध वैरत्याग दस वे नो ओल्ड इन डेज फेवरेट दैट दे ऋषीस डूइंग तपस् इन दर्मिटेज इन दस्ट ऑल दि एनिमल अराउंड दे वुड लव वन अनदर दर्स दि मेसेज दे लूज एनिमिटी and this has been proved time and again in the lives of numerous saints and sages whose very presence brought peace and love among people in recent times we had the life of bhagwan ramana maharshi tremendous life to reach this state of being is not an easy job one has to before one reaches that state encounter most trying situations for bear irritating people and endure unpleasant happenings on the way and yet remain tuned to the spiritual reality now obviously majority of people are just not ready for it they would rather get offended and react violently than for bear and remain unperturbed what's the way out for them sri ramakrishna taught cultivation of an attitude of tolerance and acceptance he said that all paths lead to the same goal provided one is sincere and earnest it is in the gospel sri ramakrishna put emphasis on the practice not simply theorizing what the world needs is less theory more practice less talking more listening less counseling more examples everyone seems more concerned about what others are doing or planning to do and less you are least concerned about what he is doing or is planning to do let us pass and look into what we are saying about others we will find it equally if not more applicable to us as well we find fault with others It's a very common nature of everyone. Ninety-nine percent of the people have this nature, finding fault, not bothering about our faults lying hidden from our sight, and craving for correction. If only we could learn to be a little more introspective, stop locating others' weak spots, and instead fish out our own uncared-for shortcomings and wrong viewpoints. the problem of wells and hatred would have definitely been hit hard on its head most quarrels are about the path not about the goal those who have actually tasted the milk don't dispute about its taste and color in fact sri ramakrishna had a funny way of communicating this truth all jackals howl in the same way men and women who have experienced the ultimate truth speak the same language quarrels and fights only indicate that we are yet to reach our destination the challenge of terrorism and violence is a challenge of providing a paradigm of acceptance and mutual understanding we are not yet need to appreciate the role of religious pluralism in promoting peace to be broad minded doesn't mean to lose faith and commitment to one's own religion but to recognize that there is truth in other religions as well this means that we need to encourage a comparative study of religions from the view point of understanding each other better sri ramakrishna actually did this in his life by himself practicing other religious practices without losing his religious moorings and cultural practices outgoing violence the inner solution seekers of god are open to receive help from any source they don't mind the source they want help there's out today inspired by sri ramakrishna's example many spiritual aspirants read books from other religious traditions and try to learn from them all the while keeping intact their inner loyalty spirituality is the core of religion 
but this core has many coverings. Sri Ramakrishna taught that there is no need to quarrel about the coverings. Let us eat the mango, leaving aside the issue of how many leaves or branches or twigs the tree has. Man is a prisoner of his senses and ego. But who wants to remain a prisoner all his life? However, however appealing may be the comforts that senses and our little ego promise their issues from the depths of every human heart. A cry to transcend desires for pleasure of senses and break the ego capsule. Only we have to wait for this opportune moment to arrive. The rest will be taken care of. Once this comes to the surface, it transforms the whole personality of a person. He no longer can be coaxed into littleness. His selfishness then begins to disintegrate. Senses don't trap him any longer. Ego capsule starts growing infirm. Such a man seeks to fulfill his own higher need. He wants God. A person who has arrived at this stage, he and he alone has the ultimate solution to all problems of life, hatred and violence including. He then becomes a channel of love and harmony and wherever he lives or goes, peace and happiness follow him like a shadow. Ultimate solution. Peace and harmony cannot be taught by framing more stringent laws or by promulgating some ordinance. These measures have only a punitive role to play and they are negative in operation. A more then the permanent solution lies in motivating people to change their thought style than just changing their lifestyle. In other words, positive cultivation of peace means we must cultivate our spiritual nature. We must develop our spiritual personality. A peaceful disposition and capacity to understand and emphasize and empathize with others he is an assured indication of how much religious or spiritual we are. Spiritual growth is largely invisible. It is inner growth, something that cannot be gauged by any physical means of measurement. If spiritual growth is the ultimate solution, Sri Ramakrishna advocates, how to know whether a person is really making some headway in his inner life, his outer life, his conduct and attitude, his reactions and responses, his plans and perspectives, everything will reflect it out. Not only his actions and decisions influencing the direction and destiny of his community will reflect it, his little unknown acts, invisible to public eye, will mirror this inner transformation. In fact, we often forget the key to social change lies in personal change. Charity begins at home, says the old adage. Not only charity, but all noble pursuits involving self-transformation begin not with relation to we, but to I. Journey of social change begins from the individual or what are nations built but multiplied individuals. Everybody speaks deeply about love, compassion, kindness, etc. But few understand the meaning of these words. These terms are just words, dry spellings, conveying no powerful personal meaning to anyone, excepting those who are spiritually sensitive. The idea of peace can never become a reality unless we re-invoke the meaning of these words in our hearts and learn to understand what they mean. This is possible 
only through a personal example. More words of explanation will only heap more words. The meaning will get further stifled and heavy laden with noise of explanation. Ishavasi Upanishad speaks of peace and understanding that is born of seeing the reality of oneness of creation. Yasmin sarvani bhutani atmaiva bhut vijanataha tatrako moha kashoka ekatva manupashyataha In fact, sorrow and delusion are rooted in the consciousness of separateness based on caste, creed, body, gender, social and economic status and so on. The less we emphasize our material nature, nearer we are to unity of existence. This again involves practice, practice of patience, understanding, forgiveness in day-to-day -day life, in homes, in colleges, in offices, in temples, everywhere. Intellectual understanding may help, but it is sincere desire to practice to undergo all that practice demands that will open the escape gate from the feeling of isolation and separateness that materialism generates. Love and willingness to sacrifice and serve others is what is required. How much of evil in the world will be wiped out if only we had learned and practiced the art of listening to others. Even before someone completes what he wants to say, we jump to conclusions, draw out our swords and are ready to respond to the war cry. It is not always differences, but often our inability to listen to each other, to understand each other, that really leads to violent scenes. First of all, let us learn to listen and understand. Good listening itself will solve most of our peace-related problems. In conclusion, Swami Vivekananda's words sum it too well to need any elaboration. This is the message of this is the message of Sri Ramakrishna to the modern world. Swami Vivekananda says that. What is that message? Do not care for doctrines. Do not care for dogmas or sects or churches or temples. They count for little compared with the excess, compared with the essence of existence in each man, which is spirituality. And the more that is developed in a man, the more powerful is he for good. Learn that first. Acquire that and criticize no one, for all doctrines and creeds have some good in them. Show by your lives that religion does not mean words or names or sects, but that it means spiritual realization. Only those can understand who have felt. Only those that have attained to spirituality can communicate it to others can be teachers of mankind. They alone are the power of light. So we can say it like this in the complete works, volume number four. So the present day negative forces can be overcome only through practice of spirituality in daily life. Everyone must sincerely aspire for spiritual realization. Then only we will be contributing towards establishing peace on this earth. Let us try to study life and teachings of Sri Ramakrishna more and more and practice them sincerely, consciously, honestly devotedly, dedicated way. 97 page Gospel. Dr. Sarkar said to Girish, that song of yours is very nice, the one about the Veena in the life of Buddha. At a hint from the Master, Girish 
and Kalipada sang together. Behold my Veena, my dearly beloved, my lute of sweetest tone, if tenderly you play on it, the strings will awaken at your touch to rarest melodies. They continued, We mourn for rest, a loss, but rest can never find. We know not whence we come, nor where we float away. Time and again, we tread this round of smiles and tears. In vain we pine to know whither our pathway leads, and why we play this empty play. They sang again, Hold me fast, O Nithai. I feel as if I shall pass away, bestowing Hari's name on men. I raised high waves in the river of my love, and now upon its raging stream I am carried helplessly. With grief my heart is laden down. Alas, Nithai, to whom shall I speak of it? Behold, I am swiftly borne away by the current of man's deep woe. Then they sang, Jagai Madai, O oh, come and dance, chanting Hari's name with fervor. And finally, come one and all, take Radha's love. The high tide of her love flows by. It will not last for very long. O oh, come then, come ye one and all. Listen to these songs, two or three of the devotees among them, Manindra and Latu, went into spiritual mood. Latu was seated by Niranjan's side. When the singing was over, the master spoke with the doctor. The previous day, Dr. Pratap Majumdar had prescribed Lux Vomica for the master. Dr. Sarkar was annoyed to hear of it. Doctor said, To give him Lux Vomica? Why? I am not dead yet. Master said smilingly, Why should you die? God forbid. May your avidya die. Doctor said, I never have any avidya. Doctor Sarkar understood avidya to mean mistress. Master said smilingly, Oh no, I don't mean that. In the case of a sannyasi, his mother, avidya, ignorance, dies. Giving birth to a child, we wake discrimination. Haribhallav arrived. Sri Ramakrishna said, I feel very happy. When I see you, Haribhallav was a man of very humble nature. He sat on the bare floor and not on the mat. He began to fan the master. He was a government lawyer at Katak. Professor Nilamani sat near them. Sri Ramakrishna did not want to offend him. Casting his glance on the professor, he said, Oh, what a grand day it is for me. A few minutes later, Dr. Sarkar and Professor Nilamani took their leave. Hari Vallabh also departed, saying that he would come again. We shall stop here. So any questions you are having, you are welcome to ask. No questions at all. This is the way of cultivating spirituality, not simply giving reasons and excuses. You have a million excuses, even if they be valid. You may have valid reasons not to attend the, or to miss some programs. No. Even the valid reasons also are not accepted. So all of you must try to become more and more participate actively in promoting the message of Sri Ramakrishna. That's our humble contribution to the humanity. If all of us take it seriously that way, we can do miracles. So, let us try to enrich ourselves, build up our personality and everything becomes easy. 
chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust, raging furiously within. Old name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, drowned deep in the waves of his bliss. Tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name, nut bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in his empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself, give honor to all. Chant and seasonly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the ties of fame. As many times I say may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as just beneath thy feet. How oh, I long for the day. When instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou, who still hast the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtue reign tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, May the freed make others free. May good bread all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour in in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works, be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.